Buenos dias, senoritas y caballeros. Oh, sh nope, wrong, wrong job. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I wanted to revisit isolating elemental potassium. Now, I've never actually done it on my channel, but years ago, I was able to isolate a little bit of potassium. Let's see. You can see there, it's just kind of ampule, a little bit ugly, highly oxidized. Well, it's not my best work. It is potassium, it still counts, but <laughs> I want to revisit it, get a larger sample, and maybe uh, I, I finally have an argon tank now, so I'm thinking I'm going to somehow try to flush the tube with argon first and then seal it off. So that's the hope. Let's see if we can isolate some elemental potassium today. So here's my little ampule off the periodic table. And you can see, I mean, it's... Focus! You see it's oxidized as hell. You can still see some, uh, some potassium there, but it's just not pretty. This is one of the bigger samples from that same batch I made. Pretty good sized chunk of potassium there. Focus! Okay. But you can also see it's got a bit of the golden oxide, which I believe is potassium trioxide. So Cody on Cody's lab showed a good video a while back, basically showing how the potassium trioxide can react with the elemental potassium and not really explode, but you know, it's still a hazard. I want to make a fresh batch. And <laughs> these are my notes from way back then. If, uh, if you're not taking lab notes, you're not doing real science. So get yourself a little composition book and write your shit down. Giving credit where credit's due, I originally saw this, this reaction or isolation on sciencemadness.org. Uh, there was a huge thread on it and tons of different people trying different things. And I tried several different grades of magnesium and realized that the purity of your magnesium is super, super critical for this reaction to be successful. So I was able to get a big block of high purity magnesium and I milled some turnings on my, my CNC mill and kept them under argon and sealed the bottle. So hopefully they're still good. Hopefully there's not too much oxides in there at this point. I did make them all the way back in 2013, so it might be, might be a little old, but we'll see. Now, I think Nerd Rage also did a video many years ago. I think he has since removed it on isolating elemental potassium. I'm, I'm not sure why he removed it but I do believe he did a video. So credit to sciencemadness.org and Nerd Rage. So you can see here I have my reagents ready to go. Some potassium hydroxide, tetrahydronaphthalene, also called tetralin, some high purity magnesium turnings that I made on my CNC mill out of a, a big chunk of high purity magnesium. Got my Vigro column with a just a piece of a glove cut off and sealed on there. That'll allow me to inject the catalyst in and then little 50 milliliter reaction vessel. And then of course this is the critical catalyst to the reaction. Now Nerd Rage has been doing a lot of experiments uh, testing different catalysts for producing sodium. I believe this one also works to make sodium. It's just on a much longer time scale than producing potassium. 2-methyl-2-butanol also called T-amyl alcohol and we're just going to use 0.8 milliliters of the stuff. So you don't need much. And I'm also doing a very, very small reaction compared to what Nerd Rage does. So I got the potassium hydroxide flakes in here and I'm just going to crush them up a little bit into a finer powder just to hopefully speed up the reaction a little bit and increase surface area. And thing is you got to be quick about this because it's super hygroscopic so it'll absorb moisture out of the air quite quickly and that is no good for the reaction. You want as little moisture water content as possible. So I'm gonna measure out five grams. And I'm now gonna add about 35 milliliters of the tetralin. This stuff smells, I mean, you can probably guess from the name, tetrahydronaphthalene. Smells just like mothballs. I don't know how you get the legs apart to smell them, but that's what mothball smells like. See, I didn't screw around sealing this sucker up. Now, the reason we're using tetralin here is because it's a very dense solvent. It is more dense than the elemental potassium, so when the elemental potassium forms, 
the balls of it are going to float up to the top and coalesce into larger and larger globules. The last time I made it, I actually had a piece so big I couldn't get it through the neck of the flask and had to cut it in there and pull it out in two pieces. All right, and now we can seal this sucker off. Give it a good turn to lock everything in place and get it on the heat. So I have my hot plate set to just over 300. All right, there's exactly 0.8 mils. And now I'm going to inject a small amount. Looks like in my successful reaction, I injected 0.2 to start and then added the remaining 0.6 out of the total of 0.8. And then we'll add the remaining in a little bit. Oh shit, I totally missed that. So here's the current reaction set up. Up at the top of the tube here I have the little glove finger. So hopefully soon we'll see some changes. I think last time it turned a... Uh... Yeah, I had a note. Rapid color change of solvent, yellow to amber, and then it eventually turned clear again. So hopefully we start seeing that soon. And I will get right back to you guys. Well, at this point, it's definitely going a bit of an amber color. Not quite as dark as I remember, but maybe it'll continue getting darker and darker. I just added in the remainder of the tea amyl alcohol, and you can see it got a little cloudy, and the boiling definitely increased. I'm not sure if that's hydrogen being produced or if that's just the tea amyl alcohol boiling off, but it definitely looks like the solution is getting a bit cloudy. So we should maybe be forming magnesium oxide now. Well, it's been about eight hours, and sadly we have a failed reaction. I was holding out hope that it would that it would eventually work, but we're just not getting any reaction going on. Now you can see the potassium hydroxide all settled out to the bottom, so that, that could be part of what was the issue. Maybe what might be a better idea is mixing the magnesium turnings or uh, chips and the potassium hydroxide before putting them into the reaction vessel and seeing how that goes. Now the other possible issue is the magnesium turnings. You can see <laughs> I, uh, I made these about five years ago and despite the fact that you know I flushed the bottle with argon and had it really well sealed with this uh, self-fusing silicone tape and Teflon on the inside threads. I, I think, you know, over five years or so, I think oxygen's just gonna get in and, and oxidize the heck out of these turnings. So, maybe I'll, uh, I'll have to do another batch and do some fresh magnesium turnings right before the reaction, make sure they work. I've done this reaction before several times in the past and been successful so I was pretty surprised this one didn't work out maybe I lost my magic touch the wife could possibly agree with that I don't know <laughs> but uh yeah I think I think we need to give this another go and you know I hate posting a fail video but that's science you know you, you screw up sometimes you fail sometimes it happens and that's how you learn so I hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to click that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click that dingleberry next to subscribe to get notified when I post. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. Bit of an update here. So I just poured the uh, contents of the boiling flask into this water bottle. And as you might be able to see, we are definitely seeing a reaction with some of the leftover water in here. So we did make some potassium. just didn't coalesce or I guess maybe it didn't have enough time but we definitely made potassium just not enough to really see so what we will do is give it another shot I guess the magnesium is okay I just have to intermix the hydroxide and magnesium and I think we'll see a much better result next time awesome